Hey everybody, Nick Espinosa, your chief security fanatic here, and today we're actually talking about democracy because when democracy dies, so does free internet access, meaning your ability to freely access information online. Here's what's going on, and I think, honestly, we take a lot for granted in our society, and I don't think many people realize just how fragile governments are, especially de uh, democratic governments. Now, I wanted to basically relate this example of a recent coup, and as I mentioned in my fourth TED Talk I did a few weeks ago Af in for about Afghanistan, the Afghanis losing their internet freedom wouldn't be the last population to deal with this, and here we are. Now, here's what's going on. That's the backdrop of this. This is coming from ZDNet, but others are reporting on this as well. General Abdel, uh, Abdel Fattah al burhan and members of the Sudanese Armed Forces shut down the company's internet this week after announcing a coup on Monday. Basically, this is less than a week old. Prime Minister Abdallah Hamdok and several government ministers were arrested as the Sudanese army took full control of the country. Now, the internet shutdown came uh, basically amid reports of troops opening fire on peaceful protesters, killing at least 11 people and injuring hundreds, although they believe the body count is more at this point. Now, both Cloudflare, massive content delivery network provider around the globe, and NetBlocks reported this week that the internet in the country was shut down. Internet blackout have basically become the go-to tactic for authoritarian governments hoping to shield their actions from the outside world. But mobile service was restored briefly on Tuesday, allowing horrifying videos of government attacks on protesters to emerge before it was shut down again. As of Friday yesterday, NetBlocks and Cloudflare confirmed the internet in Sudan is still being disrupted, leaving more than 43 million people without access to vital services or ways to communicate with the outside world. NetBlocks explained that, quote, this class of internet disruption affects connectivity at the network layer and cannot always be worked around with the use or circumvention soft of circumvention software like VPNs. Basically, they are shutting this down at what is known as the ASN level and the entire country simply can't route. So you can have a million different kinds of VPNs. None of them are actually going to connect to anything. Now, internet shutdowns like this, uh, basically like the one occurring here in Sudan, take a number of different forms. Some are full-on blackouts, while others take the form of chronic censorship. China being a good example of that, where you can get on the internet and go places, it is very heavily censored, and China will occasionally black out uh, the internet on specific days such as the anniversary of the Tiananmen Square uh, protest back in, I believe it was 1989. Now, the shutdown of even one or two services can also impact millions. In many countries, the quote-unquote internet is essentially synonymous with one or two apps that people use to communicate online every day, WhatsApp being one of those. So if the internet is down, <coughs> excuse me, WhatsApp simply can't communicate. You can't get out. You can't have uh, essentially any information leave the country via the internet which makes it harder to understand what is going on there. And this is one of those problems that I think we've got a serious, serious issue with. As we are looking at democracies around the globe under threat, and I've talked about this, again, my last TED Talk was about this, as well as... Uh, other writings and whatnot, we have a huge problem uh, when it comes to when it comes to the ability of the internet to be controlled by a government that has the ability to shut down or heavily censor it. I'm not talking about basically, uh, you know, the the whole free speech issue on Facebook of like, oh well, Facebook is banning free speech. No, I think it's it's banning speech it considers hateful. If you were to state your your belief in a different way, Facebook wouldn't ban you. Uh, but as soon as you start going off the rails or or whatever, Facebook starts flagging. And, and that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about an actual shutdown where you can't actually get to information or you can't see anything. And that obviously is a huge thing. So so there you go. It's a big problem that we've got. This is not going to be the last, just as Afghanistan was not going to be the last. But as we start looking at combating the rise of authoritarianism uh, you know, around the globe in democracies, this has to be a consideration because if an authoritarian government can control the internet... They can control the communication, which means they can control the message getting out to the world and essentially not show the horrificness that they're about to unleash or have been unleashing on the population. And that is a huge problem. So with that, let's make sure that we are uh, trying to keep the Internet free and open and hope that uh, you know government agencies around the globe, as well as the United Nations and other, other uh, outfits like that, are able to apply pressure in Sudan to make sure the Internet remains free and open. And to the Sudanese people... Best of luck to you. We are with you.
And please like, share, follow me here on Facebook and Twitter at Nick AESP. And please feel free to subscribe to me at YouTube as well. And as always, stay safe, stay online, and please stay private. Thanks, everyone.